Welcome back everybody, this is John with Swing Fit. Over the last several weeks, we've been doing a video series to help you understand how to navigate the club fitting process. I'm talking start to finish. So whether you've already been through the fitting process or you're brand new and considering doing a club fitting for the very first time, we believe this information will help you make the most of your research. So with that said, in today's video, we're gonna share the top five tips to help you prepare for your next club fitting session. So let's jump in and find out exactly what they are. So before we dive into today's topic, I first off want to welcome you to our channel. And if this is your first time, you just might want to consider hitting that subscribe button, smash the bell, so this way each and every single Monday when we drop our content, you will receive an alert when we do so. And for my current subscribers, we truly couldn't thank you enough for not only helping us grow our channel and for your continued support, but also for your continued feedback and suggestions, because it's this feedback we use to create the content you're watching. So definitely thank you again. Well, let's go ahead and jump in to today's top five tips because these top five tips is what you're gonna to wanna to look at or do leading up to your fitting session. Now, as a quick disclaimer, some of the tips we're gonna share with you today may seem like they're no-brainers, especially if you've already been through the fitting process. And if you have, then do me a favor, stick with me, because I can promise you there's gonna be some golden nuggets along the way that just might be something that you didn't think about. And for those that are brand new to the fitting process, then I can almost guarantee that there's so many other things that's at the top of your mind, these just might be an afterthought. So this really brings us to tip number one, which is create a short list. I mean, it's a pretty good chance the reason you're seeking out a fitter is because it's time for some new clubs. Maybe you've been a pin guy all your life and you just wanna see how those new irons stack up against your old ones. Maybe you went out and played around with your best friend who just bought a brand new driver. He let you hit it a couple times and you swore it felt better than yours. Or, you know, better yet, maybe you actually watched the review, watched the video of the latest golf clubs that's out there and you're just wondering how those clubs might perform for you. So create that short list, share it with your club fitter so this way you can actually try those things as the fit progresses. Because here's what's going to happen if you don't try those. You're going to leave the studio, although maybe with the best fitted club for you, with a little bit of doubt and hesitation because you was never able to check that item off the list. Number two on our list is define your goals. And I'm actually not talking about what you want to be when you grow up. I'm talking about what you hope to achieve once the fitting's completed, right? And here, I do really want you to be specific. Get into those weeds, right? Focus on the pain points, right? Because let's be real. Who doesn't want to play better golf? Who doesn't want to drop their scores, lower their handicap, and who doesn't want to blow it past everybody off the tee box? You know, those are really desired outcomes, not necessarily goals. And if you let your pain points be your marching orders and share that with your fitter, such as maybe you're struggling with the miss to the left, the miss to the right, maybe you can't get the ball up in the air or you can't find center of face. You share that with your fitter and I can almost guarantee you as a direct result of solving that pain point, you're gonna be able to achieve these other desired results. Number three on our list is our very first no-brainer, but you really will be surprised at how many people show up to a fitting session unprepared. And what I'm talking about is practice. And my favorite analogy I like to use is golf is not like riding a bike. And what I mean by that is if it's been a couple weeks since you last swung the golf club, there's a pretty good chance things are starting to come unglued. You know, so do yourself a favor, Go get a couple practice rounds in, go to a range, whether it's indoors or out, hit a couple buckets of balls. But just remember, we do not need to see a perfect swing, so don't burn yourself out. You know, we just need to see what the art of the possible is, and really all we need is three or four out of 10 shots, so this way we can move you into the right gear. But if we spend a session with the belt sander chasing one good shot, you know, it's gonna be a lot harder in order to do so. Now, although we do not need to see a perfect swing, 
we do need to see a healthy swing. And this is why this is checking in at number four. And yes, once again, you really would be surprised how many people do not listen to their body. You know, for whatever the reason, come hell or high water, we have tons of customers that will try to tough it out, muscle through the fit, knowing that they're not 100%. Maybe they're just getting over a head cold. Maybe they haven't been feeling well leading up to the fit. Um, or maybe they forgot and their buddy talked them into doing 300 pound leg squats two nights before. So guys, no matter what, if you feel that you can't bring your A game to a fitting session, do yourself, do the fitter a favor, postpone the fit. So this way, that way, when you do the fitting, we know that what you're bringing to the table is what you normally take to the golf course. And closing out our top five tips for helping you prepare for that fitting session is pick a budget. Now the good news is, is you're already halfway there because if you remember in step one, we had you create a short list of clubs that you might be interested in. Here, all you gotta do is take it a step further, do a little extra research on the internet and find out what the average retail cost is. And then you can actually compare that to what you're willing to pay. And if it just happens to fall outside of your threshold, then do yourself a favor cross it off the list, and then share that short list and your budget with your fitter. So this way you can have a conversation at the beginning of the fit. And the biggest reason why we want to do that is not to find out how much money we have to work with. We want to find out what clubs we need to weed out so that way we don't potentially take you down a path you're not willing to travel. So guys, we truly hope you found value in this information we share with you. And if you did, do me a favor, smash that thumbs up, leave any comments or questions in the remarks below. And we can't wait till next week where we dive into the top five tips to help you get the most out of the fitting session once you walk through the doors.